the U.S. Embassy in Yaoundé and demonstrated in front of the embassy. And these uh, anti-separatists are known as the, as the indomitable patriots. These indomitable patriots demonstrated at the U.S. Embassy in Yaoundé calling for the U.S. Embassy to give a leeway for the Cameroon government to arrest all the leaders of the separatists who are in the U.S., that they are causing more harm than good in the country. And so it, 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 uh, some people have condemned that, some people have appreciated it, some say it is the handwork of the government, maybe these guys, their bank accounts are, are swollen, and uh, giving to that some ex-separatists uh, the people who are in front of all this, and so they look at it to be different. Let me begin this time with Pope Bertrand. If you look at what this uh, anti-separatist uh, did, known as the Indomitable Patriots, what's your take about the whole thing? Well, it shows the peace-loving Cameroonians. They are peace-loving Cameroonians who I think if we should multiply mindsets, we'll have a, a huge crowd of people who also want peace to return to the Northwest and Southwest. But like we said, this is an ideology, a historic ideology of the people of the Northwest and Southwest. You can call them West Cameroon, Southern Cameroon, two regions uh, in, that mix up the ten regions of uh, Love It. Cameroon nation. We all we know that such a call or a demonstration is coming after recent massacres uh, across the south, the, the, the two regions, the two troubling regions. And honestly, we want to condemn. And I start by condemning that I'm telling everybody who is a freedom fighter, who is an engineer of war, an architect of war, that we should not forget that when we break out of the Nigeria parliament, I think if I'm wrong, uh, in 1957, 54. in 1954, people had different mindsets, and none was term a black leg, none was brutally murdered, until the plebiscy had played different opinions that people had, and we came to where we are today. I want to also use the opportunity to mirror and tell people that if because it is an ideology, like we said, America or Europe is a safe place for the for for, for the, the, the the terrors of war in this, in southern Cameroon. Likewise, Yaoundé also is a safe place for some people who are who are uh, flaming, who are fanning the flames of the war. If all of these peoples were in this country, in these troubling zones, I think that they would have said, "Brother, I cannot withstand this. Let us look for a way out." We can all attest, um, Thibault Nagy Jr. has said it so many times, that this is an ideology and you don't find ideology with guns. The gun must stop smoking for us to get to a consensus, a consensus of peace. He has said it clear that the people of the Southwest and the Northwest want to have a saying in their own matters. He has said it clearly that Construction, rehabilitation of the Northwest and Southwest cannot go on while the guns are still at loud. And again, we must understand that if you demonstrate today, the people of the Southwest and Northwest abroad have demonstrated, in, even in front of the UN, it is there is a process they call the SOP, that is Standard Operation System. It is a mechanism that all these foreign countries use. If we must solve our own problems within ourselves, they will take five, six, seven, ten years to come. The death, the atrocities by them will have been multiplied. Brothers and sisters, let us come back, put our heads together, look for a true solution to this problem. And I'm proposing an all-inclusive, truth, fairness, respect of persons initiative dialogue. Okay, uh, uh, Mr. Ate Solomon, if you look at the leaders of this demonstration, they are all maybe as uh, separatist fighters. And uh, before this demonstration, we saw on social media where the leader came and called on all Cameroonians. I even told the women that if it means that they have to go naked in front of the U.S. Embassy and shake the gates 
and cry that these people should be arrested. Now, what's your take? Some people say maybe the hand of the government is in need and so these guys have been given something. Because we know it's fun of our is fun with our country that way you see people demonstrating if that demonstration is allowed one maybe the government is aware of it in support of it some monies have passed and so on what's your take about that those people might not be far from the truth and not might not be unconnected with the truth yeah. because we live in a very funny country where um you ban protests and you allow protests <laughs> doesn't make sense. If you want protest, allow people to protest from all perspectives, allow people to express themselves from all perspectives. Mm -hmm. Secondly, those who are protesting in, the fr in front of the uh, embassy today, they are doing their own protest. I'm sorry to say so. You should not protest for the leaders to be arrested because I remember very well, Ambazonian leaders were arrested in Nigeria and so-called extradition took place. Yes. Where are we today? They are in prison, right? Yeah. It's, has the crisis stopped? No. So why have we refused to learn our lessons in this country? Why do we always keep thinking that arrest solves problem? If the Ambazonian war is a the war of ideology, if you, no matter how many leaders you arrest, others will spring up, and they will still preach the same thing, and so. Instead of protesting in front of the U.S. Embassy asking the American government to arrest separatist leaders, they should go protest asking the U.S. to mediate over the crisis so that we can have a peaceful end. That is a genuine protest that each and every one of us would like to support. And so if you go protesting and asking for somebody to be arrested and you think that you are finding a solution to the crisis, I'm, I'm sorry, you're part of the problem. If you say the U.S. should like intervene and mediate, you know they don't go somewhere. As it is popularly said, yeah. they don't go somewhere without seeing what they have to gain from there. Well, that's an ideology. What we what, that, 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 that's the kind of ideology we tend to promote. Okay. Um, each, each time we we, 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 we think that uh, a solution can come from here, yeah, somebody will say it cannot come because this person thinks that there's a difference between intervention and mediation. Let us not forget. Some people intervene in, in conflicts in order to protect their interests. But we are talking about people who are interested in mediating. And it looks like the whole of today I've been talking about mediation. Mm -hmm. You know, I've talked about mediation. And I'm saying, again, that in mediation, the mediator is somebody who is neutral in his position and objective. Yeah. And from all sides, the American government has been very neutral as far as this conflict is concerned. They have been equivocally on the side of the truth, saying what is supposed to be said for the conflict to come to an end. And so instead of some people that are called rented protesters go sit in Yaoundé to protest about the rest of separatist leaders, which I equally think that separatist leaders have exaggerated in what they are doing, because I myself sitting here today, I've been tagged a black leg and that I should be arrested according to them. According to them, I should be kidnapped because I'm an, an enabler. I don't know how many times my name has floated there <laughs> because they think that I'm an enabler. But I think that the solution is not to arrest them because the more you arrest, the more they become very radical. We should learn even from the, uh, um, uh, for, 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 from the terrorist group. When they arrested Yusufu, the founder of Boko Haram, which was initially peaceful, that was when this present leader, Abu Bakr Shekau, came up with a more violent approach. And so the same case comes with the, the separatist movement, the Ambazonian movement. Sisiku Ayyuktabe was more of a diplomat, even though he said he stood for the independence of Southern Cameroon, but he used a more peaceful approach. But what happened? He was arrested and the movement became violent. Mind you, if you arrest this one today, others will rise and they might start fabricating bombs. And we don't know who is safe and who is not safe. And so instead of us saying that we should go and arrest leaders in the US, we should say that there should be a genuine dialogue. That is what those protesters in Yaoundé should be doing. They go and tell whether they are ex-separatist fighters or not. They should be able to tell the truth that arresting separatist leaders 
will not solve the problem, but it will rather postpone the problem because there is a genuine malaise of anglophone marginalization. Let us not forget, we always have to come back to the reality. There is a genuine anglophone malaise in this country that led us to where we are. And for us to put an end to it, for people not to exploit and establish chaos in the Northwest and Southwest regions, let us get down and examine what pushed us to where we are today. What led to the events of 2016? Why were Anglophones protesting? Those are the questions we should be asking ourselves today as a nation. If we have arrived at the point where blood doesn't mean anything to anybody, it means that this country is suddenly heading to somewhere that we need to avert, and we cannot avert that by arrest. We need to avert that by sitting down and talking to ourselves. Okay, uh, Mr. Gentle, should it be like the U.S. is uh, a center for the promotion of terrorism? Because if you look at it, any terrorist group has something to do with the U.S. Either you see, if it's in Africa, you see the leaders go there, if uh, maybe you always have meetings being held there and so on. W what's your take about this, that all over the world, when we talk of terrorism, you see the U.S. is in the center of it? It depends on American. It's part, uh, America is a country that... America is like the father or mother of democracy. She's a country that is open to all, receive all. Uh, it's no man's when, land. It's no man's land. No, it's, 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 it's a no man's land when once you respect the, their yeah. rules and okay. regulation. When I saw on the media on how <coughs> the youth in Yaoundé, because they targeted the American amb embassy yeah. so as to give a signal to American diplomats in, yeah. in Yaoundé to correspond to the White House that there's need for Anglophone separatists based in the U.S. to be arrested because it is... Yeah, yeah, it had come to the notice of the Yaoundé regime that the high number of Anglophone separatists are based in the U.S., yeah, yeah. which is similarly true. And maybe their bank accounts are also there, mm -hmm. because we saw one bank account who have, which has been discovered with billions of francs. Mm -hmm. So, uh, coming back, I I don't know. When I saw this youth marching along, I just uh, knew that it was a bit embarrassing. And so I, I was surprised because I don't know whether we follow news and we listen to to media because yeah. it was the same time that Tibo Naki came to Cameroon yeah. and I, when he came to Cameroon he was interviewed by it. he was receiving in Cameroon he's, he's an American representative for African Affairs I, I think it's African Affairs yes. one of the pertinent questions that one outstanding journalist for Canada they asked him was why is it that America is still hosting Anglophone separatists the man told them categorically declared that we Americans we don't care so far even you whatever you are so far, if an American respect our laws, rules and regulations, it's okay. The only thing that can make us be angry when we go against we American laws or constitution. That's, but, well, that's, that, that is that respect. not a kind of diplomatic no, not, way no, of... In, 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 that was, uh, it go back to what I was trying to say, that America yeah. is a country where you, come to, where, you say, where you come to democracy, where you come to liberalism, there's that freedom. You can okay. stand in front of Donald Trump and tell him what he's doing that is wrong. Okay. And you, if you tell, you know, you see the interview with Donald Trump on yeah. media, some people will tell him openly in sorry in front of the people. That, that's the more America is too when it comes to democracy, she's too open. When when Tibon Naki told this Cameroon journalist that what are the separatists are doing well in Cameroon, so far they respect American laws, American constitution. There's no problem. I think that's what the lesson that Cameroonian would have learned from that particular statement from such a diplomat. Even if it's contradictory, even if it's a two-sided statement, but they will learn a lesson so that they will not go again and gather you that they should go and march beside US embassy. To pass a signal whereby where an American diplomat made it clear that they don't care about the, the separatists and their relation with Cameroon. They care about the separatists or any other. They are staying. Yeah, and they are staying in the US and they respect to their American laws or constitution. So, uh, uh, coming back now, what I'm trying to say now is it is very funny. It is very funny. Although it's, a, uh, it's an excellent measure from the government, it's a, you no, know, our government will keep trying. We keep trying any step to see whether we can put an end to Anglophone crisis. But it is, it, is, it is funny and so surprised in the sense that it is a right thing, but for how, for how long? How long will it, shall we keep on politicizing the lives of people dying every day? The Cameroon military, the ambas, the, the, the civilians are all Cameroonians. Yeah. I, 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 I think I like one of the statements that is coming from the communique. 
from this AGC. They say that seven one seven one so is saving humanity. If we are sincere to ourselves, why can't we do what take time that up to four years and now we will not take a 2021 we'll make from crisis? What happened that uh, Cameroonians of good faith, of honesty, of, of sincerity, of genuinity cannot come to the table, sit together and put an end to Anglophone crisis? Why keep on politicizing the lives of people dying in Nose and Sowers? The military keeps saying that if you are in a position to put an end to Anglophone crisis and you fail to do it because your family is safe and you are safe and you don't care, you're man fool. There's no problem. You can be above man, you can be above man, but you cannot be above God. Yeah. Or you cannot be above the law of karma. It is high time that we should forget about. It. Yes, we are not condemning that the youth march. It was a good thing to show that we don't. There's terrorism. There's killing. There's kidnapping. There's torture. There's rape in Nogos and Sarawak that deprives children from going to school. But is that the way forward of making everything? You say you go and march. If we are think the best thing for this thing, we keep singing every day over and over. Let the kids sit down. Let the kids listen. Look at. I listened to the speech of Professor Joe, Joe Dene Somba. He said that the Anglophone crisis going on in Norway and Saudi is similar to is similar to a, a colonial war fighting against white settlers. It's similar to the, the apartheid of 1948 to 1990 in South Africa. He made a lot of, a lot of called for confederation. Yes, yeah. and he ended up by saying that for our government to neutralize the secessionist tendency in Norway and Saudi there is a need. For the government to call for a federation or a confederation, yeah. a confederation will or federation will better neutralize the anglophone secessionist group or, 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 or separatists. But uh, we, if we keep on playing life because you're man fool, I'm not touched, it does not concern me. You can be above man, but you will not be above God. And uh, we keep saying this thing people don't know. People don't know. Those who are perpetuating acts of killing, torture, raping, all war crimes in Northern South, they will go in for. It's a matter of time. They, they, they don't know it's a matter of time. Whether you are who, the standard you go in for. They are putting record. People are put satellites in these regions. You will go in, you, they know whether you can escape. So it is something itself perpetrating act thinking that maybe whatever. Let's sit down and this thing. We are all Cameroonians. Okay, dear viewers, before I end on this topic, uh, we have just a few minutes. We discussed on the Malian uh, military coup last time, but I would like us to use about five minutes to talk on that. But just 10 seconds, your conclusion on this topic. And since the reason for taking so many of these topics is because all of the topics are similar. They are all about Anglophone conference. So that's why I wanted us to take it exactly on what I wanted to get. Now, in 10 seconds, maybe two, three points, what should be done to end this uh, problem in Cameroon. Maybe look at the camera because the administrators, the politicians, or whosoever are watching you. Two, three solutions to this problem. First, we stop counteracting effects. Mm -hmm. This cam does this cam this cam does this. This one goes and posts first. This yeah. one this cam does this. This one goes and posts first. Mm -hmm. Counteracting effect. Secondly, sincerity towards that genuine dialogue. Okay. Thirdly, we need to live, learn to live together, feel, have the human feeling for one another Brotherly as Kama, modern love as Cameroonian. Yes. And let me reiterate that maybe somebody in the Norwest in the Sanja with a small cup and say, well, the broom does not mean living together, okay. or coming and eating Eru does not mean living together. Somebody in the Norwest putting on a uh, a, a, a gandura from the north is different from that. There must be that human feeling for each other. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Ati Solomon, 10 seconds. Well, we have fought ourselves for four years now and no solution has come. It is obviously clear that there is no solution to the conflict through us. The solution to the conflict is a political solution. Okay. The earlier we understand that, the better. The arrests of leaders will not solve the problem. We arrested other leaders, we have not solved the problem. I don't see any magic in the arrest of these new leaders that will solve the problem. Mr. Gentil, immediate solution to the Anglophone crisis? I, I think they should just 
a call for our own say that you should call again for another honest and sincere dialogue. I always say that there's a need for us to sit on the Some table. people say the president has a yam and a knife. Yeah, that, that is the, that's the number one, the main stakeholder. Okay, dear viewers of CMTV, viewers of Crossviews, uh, as I said last time, last program we talked on the coup against uh, the president of...